It was sprinkling a little earlier. Now all of a sudden the weather's great. No, it it's not. Calm it's earlier. windy. It's yeah, windy. right. It was calm earlier. Now all of a sudden it's windy. All these factors change just in a few minutes. Okay, if you're not managing those things on your farm, then you're gonna have some major issues. We wanted to talk today a little about what spray nozzle you're gonna use, how you can manage spray drift, rain fast times, all those things. We were talking to a guy in an area where it was really cool in the mornings yet. He said, wow, you know, is it too cool? Am I gonna do a good enough job? How can I do a better job? And one of the ways that you can make any herbicide you're spraying do a better job is get great spray coverage. And this big concern about drift, in many cases, overpowers the concern about weed control. We're so worried that we're gonna have drift. We're willing to give up a bunch of weed control. Well, you don't always have to do that. You have to keep good weed control in mind as well. So we wanna get great spray coverage and we'll talk more about that. But the flip side of the thing is we do want to reduce our spray drift, especially when you're spraying products that can move. And there are lots of them out there, starting with Roundup, but there are others. So here are your two choices that you have if you want to reduce spray drift. You can switch your spray nozzle, switch to an air induction nozzle or turbo T-jet. You can also use a drift retardant, something like the HPG polymer, something like a polyacrylamide or a lecithin product. You've got a number of choices there. I would do one or the other. I probably would not do both. In other words, don't do drift retardant and the spray nozzle because both things are going to make the droplet size bigger. And if you do both the air induction or turbo T-jet nozzle, plus you're doing a drift retardant, then you may end up clogging up some tips, having some problem there. We don't want to see any of that kind of thing going on. So we're going to make our droplet size bigger. That's going to make the droplet heavier. It's going to get to the ground just through gravity. It's going to get to the ground rather than drifting. But to Darren's point, now we've got the other issue of we got a bigger droplet, so we're not going to have as good a spray coverage. How's that affect us? It makes a big difference and depends on the product that you're using too. Like let's use Roundup, for example, one that does move through the plant. If you get a few droplets, on the leaf, usually you do a pretty good job killing with Roundup in good conditions. But let's say you have extreme conditions. It's been really cold or you're having a extreme drought or something like that where you aren't going to get all of that Roundup into that leaf and you aren't going to move it through the plant very quickly with actively growing weeds. When you have those kind of conditions, you need to get more product to land on that plant in order to have good luck. So you're definitely going to reduce the control when you have just a few great big droplets hitting a plant rather than lots and lots of very small droplets hitting the plant. Now with contact activity products like a Bucktroll or an Ignite, you need to do a great job covering all over that plant if you're gonna do a good job with weed control. So in those cases, you better pick good days to spray because you can't use those drift control nozzles. You need a regular flat fan nozzle that's gonna do a great job making small particles that are gonna completely cover that weed. So in summary for you, here's what I would do. I'd be ready to go in all different scenarios. I would have triple nozzle bodies on my sprayer so you can very quickly switch spray tips. I would have some drift retardant along just in case you need to do that. I would be ready to go in any situation. My overall advice for you is this. Spray your very best cleanest fields on the days that are maybe a little marginal. It's a little windier, you need to switch to turbo T-jets, use some drift retardant, something like that. Okay, then take your very weediest fields, spray those on the perfect days. The weather's great, you know you're gonna get great control, you have no wind out there, and then use flat fan nozzles to get the very best spray coverage because you have so many weeds. So that's how I would set things up on my farm. We've talked about spray coverage versus spray drift, uh, but another thing that you mentioned was rain fast times, and that is something you have to keep in mind. In general, as soon as that product dries on the leaf, we feel pretty confident that it's gonna work most times, but you do have to look at each label because it does vary from product to product. Yeah, and it can make a difference if you're spraying late in the evening or early in the morning, something like that when dew is gonna be coming on the plants. We're not real big fans of spraying when there's dew out there because then all of a sudden, instead of spraying with 10 gallons of water, Water per acre, you sprayed with 10,000 gallons of water per acre. And in other words, you're going to have products that are going to run off the leaf rather than getting in. So this all kind of ties back into spray coverage and drift and everything else. Well, drift control is very important, especially if you have products that you're spraying that could harm neighboring crops or roadside ditches or something like that. So do use some caution. You may switch nozzles during the day and you would like to carry some drift control product along as well. So you could just add something into the spray tank to make the water droplets a little bit bigger too. Well, speaking of spraying, we still have to control our weed of the week. Can you identify this week's weed? 